Hello learners, welcome to Python Revision Tour Session 6. In previous class, we have gone through syntax, example code and programs related to conditional and iterative control flow statements in Python. In this class, we are going to see few advanced aspects of these control flow statements. We will see how we can use an optional else part with the for loop and while loop along with the concept of nested conditional and looping construct. So let us begin. So here is the optional syntax for both the loops which we didn't focus in our previous class. The for loop and the while loop both comes with an optional else part which may be added to the end of its syntax. As you can observe that additional else part syntax marked in orange on your screen. Both for and while loop in Python also take an optional else suit like the if statement which executes if the loop iteration completes normally. In other words, the else suit will be executed if we don't exit the loop in any way other than its natural way. So this means that in case where the loop is exited through a break or return statement, this else part will not be executed. Now, a big question arises that what difference the else part makes to the syntax of for or while loop. So nothing special, it all adds to the syntax as whatever could be done in the else part could be done outside the scope of for and while loops. Moreover, it is an optional in nature. The only thing the else offers is that it results in a more elegant and Pythonic code and can often make the code more readable. There are use cases or situations where using else make the code more readable, clear and short. Let us first see the flow of execution of looping constructs with the optional else part with the help of an example code and then we will understand its benefits by observing a use case exercise example where else makes the coding In this example, we will see the effect of adding an optional else part in for and while loop. So let us begin by creating a new file program. So here we are going to write a program uh, for loop and we will iterate this for loop uh, within a string. So for ch in the let word string and then let us write if ch is equal to equal to i break print ch else print this is else part of for and here we normally write this is outside for so let us compile this code and let us see what happens when we compile this code. So let me name this file as else for. So you can see here the output given here is somewhat uh, it is printing the letters S, T and R. And uh, as per the code, let us verify our output. So you can see here that the letter S, T and R are printed since this if condition within the for loop is not met. As soon as the CH is iterated to the, to the letter I, 
the ch becomes letter i the break is executed so as as soon as the ch reaches the letter i it gets it itself equal to letter i and this condition the if condition is satisfied and hence the break statement is executed so at this point of time we are coming out of the for loop and since we are coming out of the for loop and not completing the loop normally the else part will not be executed this is the flow control flow logic of a for loop with a else part so the else part of a for loop will only be executed when the loops completes its iteration normally that is if the loop would have completed it, its iteration for s t r i n and g all of them for all of them then only it will reach to the else part and will print this line that is this is the else part of the for but since it has not reached up to the end of the for loop normally and it has broken out of the loop uh, within the for loop itself so here we don't have we are not getting the chance of executing the else part of the for loop and it is coming out of the loop and it is go going to print this is outside for now let us let us remove this particular part by commenting it say for example i am putting a comment over here and let us compile the code again and see what happens now you can see here the execution is something s like s t r i n n g so all of the letters in the string is getting printed and none of them is uh, is invoking any break because we have commented this logic the if condition is being commented out so every character is being printed and the loop is completing its normal course of execution that means the normal iteration of loop gets completed so here the loop is iterating for 1 2 3 4 5 & 6 times so after the sixth iteration the loop proceeds to the else part and it get it it gets itself into the else part and whatever is written within the else part is being executed so this is the else part of for is being this line of code will be executed and it is printing this is the else part of the for and after which it comes out of the for loop and whatever is given normally it is going to be printed so this is outside for will also be printed now let us see the example related to a while loop and the use of else part within the while loop so here what we will do we'll write a code a small code snippet using while loop so int i is equal to 1 while i is less than equal to say 10 need to iterate it throughout the values up to 10 and if i is equal to equal to 5 at this point of time we'll just break it break out of the loop and if not then print the value of i and then we'll write i is equal to i plus 1 and here we'll put a else part and in the else part we'll write print value of i is i now let us execute the code and see what happens so here you can see that it is giving the values 1 2 3 4 and it is coming out so let us let us understand what happened when we are doing this when we are putting a break statement within a condition if condition inside the while loop when the i reaches up to 5 that means it it iterates it, it starts it itself from 1 
So for value i equal to 1, this condition is not satisfied, hence break is not met and the value 1 is printed. Hence the first value comes. Likewise, for value i equal to 2, this condition is not true, hence break is not met and the value is printed. So i is becoming 2 here, so 2 is printed. Then next the i becomes 3. So similarly, for i equal to 4 also, this condition is not met and the break is not met and the condition is not satisfied. So the break is not met and it is not breaking out of the loop and the value of i 4 is printed. Now what happens when in the next iteration is that the value of i is going to become 5. Now when it is becoming 5, this condition is satisfied. i is equal to equal to 5 gets satisfied and the break condition is being met and the control breaks out of the while loop. And as we have seen in for loop that when the control breaks out of the for loop without completing the normal iteration of for loop, it never goes to the else part of the for loop. Similarly, here also when the while loop is broken uh, without normal termination of the while loop using a break statement, the else part of the while loop will not be executed and hence this line the value of i is i that is not being shown here. Now let us comment the break part and see what hap what difference it makes to the code. So let us comment this line and see what happens when we execute this code. Now you can see that it is showing you all the values right starting from 1 to 10 and at last it also executes the else part since the loop is executed for 10 times, 10 normal times, never it is broken out of the while, it is completing its normal course of iteration and then it is coming out successfully to the else part and the else part is executed and hence the value of i is i is being printed as the last value for i becomes 10 plus 1 which is equal to 11 and since this condition 11 is never satisfied again that means the condition for the last iteration the value of i when becomes 11 what happens here is that when we are going to compare the value of i 11 with this value so when i becomes 11 when i becomes 11 this condition this part uh, 11 less than equal to 10 becomes false and since it becomes false the control jumps to the else part when this condition i is equal i is less than equal to 10 for the last iteration when the value of i becomes 11 this condition 11 less than equal to 10 becomes false and the control jumps from the normal execution of while loop to the else part hence we can say that when the while loop is completed or in other words we can say that when the condition of the while loop is not met or it is false then only the control jumps to the else part and the else part is being printed but one thing is to be kept in mind that if we are using any break statement within for loop and if that break statement is met then the normal course of execution of while loop is not being held and at, uh, in this situation the else part will never be executed. So now let us see the use case scenario with the help of an example program where we will check whether any vowel character exists in a given string or not. If it exists then the vowel exists message will be printed otherwise the vowel does not exist message will be shown. So let us write the code in a new file and see what happens. So we have a code, so we are going to write a program for to find existence of a vowel within a string. So first we will input a string as name input enter any string 
and then what we will do we'll write if ch so we'll have to run a for loop since we have to check each and every letter of the given string so for ch in name if ch in and then we will compare each letter with a set of vowels so a e i o u print vowel exists else will write print vowel does not exists right now let us run this code and see what happens with the code So enter any string, I am going to enter, uh, say suppose for example, I am going to enter my name Kamal and see what happens. Now this is a weird type of output which is shown uh, in front of your screen, in, in front of you on the screen uh, that uh, it is showing uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 lines and each line in each line it is altering its output that means in the first line it is showing vowel does not exist in the second line it is showing vowel exists third line vowel does not exist in the fourth line it, it shows you vowel exists and in the fifth line it is showing you um, vowel uh, does not exist now why this happens uh, uh, is because the first letter which is k is not a vowel and hence the output is vowel does not exist and again the next letter is a so it, it shows you vowel exists and again the third letter is not a vowel so hence it is showing you vowel does not exist and the fourth letter is a again which is a vowel it shows um, the vowel exists and the last letter which is not a vowel again it shows vowel does not exist. So with my name uh, it is showing alternatively a vowel exists, vowel does not exist. For another set of output it may be something different but the point of uh, question over here is that the output should not be like this because uh, output should be a single output that is either it should show vowel exists or, or it should show vowel does not exist because as soon as it is getting over here a it should not tell uh, it should not check the other uh, parts of the string that means other letters of the string m a l should not be checked further right because uh, you have you are already getting what a vowel over here. So no need to check again for other letters. Moreover, when it is getting K, which is not a vowel, it should not, it should not give the output vowel does not exist, right? It should give vowel does not exist at last when it completes the whole iteration. That means reaching up to L, it should show the vowel exists or vowel does not exist. So this type of output is not a good output because it is uh, one one time it is showing vowel exists, another time it is showing vowel does not exist. So let us let us modify our program and let us see how we can remove this type of peculiarity, right? So let us uh, write a program, write a, uh, put a minute change in our program so that this peculiarity can be removed. So what we will do, we will put a flag variable over here, flag vowel is equal to and make it as false that means we are we are we are uh, uh, we are taking we are uh, we are we are uh, it is, we are affirming to the statement that vowel does not exist right and we will prove ourselves false so we are we have taken a flag variable here flag underscore vowel is equal to false you can take any name of the variable but here it is flag underscore vowel is equal to false now what i will do is going here going here what we will do when we reach here when the when the ch is within this set of vowel then instead of printing vowel exist what i will do here i will simply uh, set this flag variable flag vowel variable as true since we have got a vowel right and then we will come out of the loop by using a break statement right and this 
else part will not be paired with this if rather what we will do we will pair will 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 just remove this particular uh, else part this else part is not needed at all so coming out of the loop coming out of the loop what we will do we will check our flag vowel variable whether the flag vowel variable is true or false if it it is true then that means this condition if ch in vowel this has become true that means we have found a vowel and we have broken out of the loop and if this condition is never met suppose this if condition is never met so that ch does not matches with a e i u for any of the letters present in the inputted string then this condition will never be met and the flag vowel will remain what what it was initially and it was initially it was been set to false hence the flag vowel variable will be remaining false only so when coming out of the loop we'll find it false so if coming out of the for loop we are finding our flag vowel variable as false that which that this means that no vowel is being found the situation is as it was earlier when the loop started right but when coming out of the loop we are finding flag vowel variable as true then this means that this if condition is being satisfied at some point of time within the string and hence we can say that vowel exists so coming out of the loop what i will write a small piece of logic over here if flag vowel i will just check flag vowel vowel is equal to equal to true then i will say vowel print vowel exists in string right if not else i will print means the vowel is false if not means vowel is false if the vowel vowel flag vowel variable is false then vowel is vowel does not exists in the string right now let us compile this code and let us find out what happens when we run this code now you see our first output was something like this now let us let us run our output and let us see what output it gives for kamal so k a m a l now you see vowel exists in the string it is showing only one output and that is because that is because let us let us let us compile let us understand why this is giving this type of output so for the first time when k is met the value of ch is k in the first iteration the value of ch is k right if k in this which is false that means k is not not present in this set of vowels so this can this in is becoming what false so the condition is becoming false when it is coming false it will never go inside the if condition and hence it will continue the loop the for loop will continue for the next letter and the next coming letter is small a in my name the next coming letter is in kamal the next coming letter is small a right this small a is now becoming ch so ch is again compared with a e i o u and it is satisfied because in the set of in in this list there is uh, there is presence of a a is being present there right so since a is there we can say that this is this condition is satisfied and hence and hence it goes inside the if condition when it comes inside the if condition this flag vowel is equal to true becomes executed and when it executes this flag vowel becomes true and the break statement is met and the loop is terminated when the loop is terminated we are coming out of the loop and we are comparing the flag vowel variable and since we are coming uh, comparing the flag vowel variable and if it is found to be true which is which happened in our case because the out input was kamal so for a this becomes the flag vowel variable became true and hence this condition becomes true and this this line will be this uh, this condition if condition will be satisfied and the line print vowel exist in the string will be printed and since this part is in the else part this vowel does not exist in the is in the else part which will never, never be executed now let us compile the program again and with a different set of input and see what happens let us compile it with another set of uh, string where no vowel is there say for example uh, i am writing a name say uh, 
GSTR, say suppose. Now let us check. Now you see the output is the output is vowel does not exist in string. Now why this happens? Because each letter G E S T R is not the part of this set of vowels and hence the flag vowel variable remains false. And since it remains false, the loop is normally terminated and when it is coming out of the loop, the flag vowel is variable equal to equal to true, this condition becomes false and it, the logic comes into the else part and hence this part is printing. Now, this code is somewhat lengthy and bit clumsy. This can be reduced, this code can be reduced with the help of else part of the for loop. When we will, we will use else part in the for loop, using this uh, else part, we can reduce the code complexity as well as we can make it more readable. Let us see how to do that. So what I will do, I will just comment out this section because it is no longer needed. So I will comment it out and here I will make a small change instead of writing break, uh, break will be there that is okay but here what I will do, I will not take flag variable, no need of flag vari variable in this type of code. What I will do, I will just remove this flag variable, This it's not needed at all. Here I will do what, what I will do, I will write, so our code was flag, uh, flag vowel uh, equal to true, that was the code. So let us remove this code also by commenting it. It is not needed. Here I will write simply when it is matching, the ch is matching with a, e, i, o, u, I will simply print uh, vowel exist, right? Vowel exists in the string, right? This output will be given here and then the break statement will be executed. And coming out of here, now I will write a else part of this for loop. And in the else part, in the else part, I will simply print, print vowel does not exist. Now see, let us see what happens. So what I had, I have done, I have not used any flag vowel over here. I have removed all the lines of code related to the flag vowel. Simply, I am checking the condition. Uh, I am checking the letters inside the string one by one and comparing it with A, E, I, O, U. If it is found to be true, then I will printing vowel ex exist and I am breaking out of the loop because the next time I don't want to compare any of the letters in the loop with A, E, I, O, U. So hence I am breaking it out. And when I am breaking the program, it is showing that vowel exists in the string. But if my name does not have any vowel at, at all, then this condition, this if condition will never be met. And when this if condition is never going to be met, the loop will complete normally because this break will never be met. Since the loop will be completed normally, will complete and, and as we know that when the loop completes normally, the else part of the loop will be executed. And since the loop will be completed normally, in this case, when I, 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 my name does not have, my string does not have any vowel, then it will come out to, to the else part of this for loop and this line will be printed, vowel does not exist. So let us compile and see what happens. Let us compile the code again. And let us enter my name first, which has a vowel and see it is giving you vowel exist in the string. And now let us compile again and give it, it a new input where the vowel is not there. So. Now giving new input, let us say I am giving K S T R. Now you see here it is giving vowel does not exist. Why it is doing so? Because in the let in the string K S T R none of them is vowel. So the first letter which is K, this condition is false. When this condition is false, the loop will be iterating to the next value which is S. Again this S will not be matching matched with A E I O U. Hence the loop will iterate for the next value which is t. Again t will not be matched with a e i o u. So it will proceed to the next iteration and the next next letter is r and r will be again not in within this that set of values a e i o u. Hence again the if condition is false. So the loop iterates to the next letter. Now there is no let, next letter. 
hence the loop will iterate fully and the loop will come to its end when the loop is coming to its end the else part will be executed and it will be showing you vowel does not exist so with this example i hope it is clear that how we can use else part to reduce the code complexity with a for loop and how a for loop with else part makes the code more readable and more elegant for you on the use of looping construct with an additional else part you should pause the video right now and read the question carefully and create two versions of the programs as told in the question the solution for this is done for you but before jumping to the solution i would like you to pause here and attempt the question yourself so let us see the solution for the previous exercise question which asked you to check whether a given number is a prime number or not so we know that a prime number is divisible by only and only by 1 and itself putting it in other words we can say that a prime number n is never divisible by any number between 2 to n minus 1 so also we can uh, we know that no number is divisible by any number lesser than half of it so we can more specifically say that a prime number n is not divisible by any number between n by 2 to n minus 1 excluding when n is equal to 2 so let us put this logic into a python code and see whether we are able to create a program to check for primality of a number so let us write the code going to the file mode so first we have to ask a number so i will take a number n is equal to int input enter a number and then i have to run a loop i for i in range n pi by 2 because we will have to generate an integer value integer quotient so that's why we are taking a flooring operation floor floor operator n by by 2 to n up to n minus 1 so we have to take here n because the range the range function produces any value from uh, first uh, lower limit to the upper limit minus 1 so it's automatically taking n minus 1 so don't put here n minus 1 we have to put here n only the next parameter the second argument will be n only so n and then if n is equal to equal to 2 then simply for this is this is exclusion because 2 will not be checked uh, normally for the prime so we have to exclude 2 and we will we will write here uh, simply we will write here it is a, a prime number right so exclusively for 2 this statement is there if not else and after uh, showing that 2 is prime we will not stay here it will break the program will break else what we will do elif n percent i is equal to equal to i will check the divisibility zero then what i will do i will print here print not a prime number and then i will come out of the loop and simply i will write here not a prime number and i will break okay and if so then here coming out of the loop i will write a in, in the else part of the loop and here i will write print it is a prime 
number right this is a prime number now let us run this code and uh, find out what output it gives so primality so let us enter uh, any value say for example the trivial value 2 it is showing it is a prime number right so whatever logic we have put in this code is correct is going correct till now so now let us check for another value let us run the program for another value and see what happens let us enter any another prime number say for example 7 and it is showing it is a prime number right suppose uh, we check for a larger value let us check for a larger value and see whether it gives you the answer or not say for example 749 say for example it is a prime number right so like that it, it it always checks out the things okay so now let us uh, find out uh, the details of the code so that we can understand it better so the code here is self-explanatory and we'll find we find that uh, using else part this else part uh, with the for makes it makes the whole code a lot easier right so what happens here we are as we have explained earlier that we have to check for divisibility between n by 2 to n minus 1 and for this the loop is being taken and for each iteration of this loop uh, there will be a newer value for i in between this range so i will take any value between this range and we will divide the n the number which is which was inputted by i to check whether it is divisible by i or not and if, it, if, if we are finding the remainder as 0, that means, which means what? If the number is divisible by i. And hence, we will print not a prime number and we will not further check for any other divisibility and we will break out of the loop, right? But if this loop runs and these two conditions are never met, say for example, neither the inputted value is 2 nor the inputted value is being divisible by any value in the range n by 2 to n minus 1. So, none of these conditions will be satisfied and hence these two breaks will never be met. So, the whole for loop will be normally completed. It will be normally terminated. And as we know that when the for loop gets normally completed, the else part will be executed and hence we are saying that it is a prime number in the else part. Since it has not been divisible by any of the number between n by 2 to n minus 1. Say that. Nesting in general means to enclose things into another thing so as to cascade the control flow. Nesting of control flow statements means keeping one control flow statement within the body of another control flow statement. For example, a if statement can be nested within another if statement or a for loop statement can be nested within another for loop or a while loop. Similarly, we can nest any control flow statement within the body of any other control flow statement. Let us observe a few examples code snippet to understand the concept of nesting. In the first code snippet, we have a simple if nested within another simple if so that the statement kept under the inner if condition executes only when both of the if statements are satisfied. You may observe the code on your screen. The second code snippet shows nested, nesting of a compound if else pair within a simple if. In the third and the fourth example, several layers of nesting is being done so that one logic cascades itself within the flow of the other logic. The last couple of examples shows how we can nest a for within another for or a while within another while statement. To understand the flow of nested control structure, let us see a code example. For, for first, so first uh, we will, uh, we'll see, the, see the, for, so first, uh, we will see the nesting of conditional construct so for this i am going to write a small code uh, 
to check for even positive or uh, odd positive or even negative or even positive numbers so let us write the code and I am taking x equal to minus 5 if x is greater than 0 this shows if again now you can see here I am nesting one if within the body of other if since you can see here the identification of the second if is bit larger than the first one so this if is supposed to be inside the body of the outer if so in here I will write if x percent 2 is equal to equal to 0 this is check for even so I will print here print x is even positive right now let us execute the code and see whether we are able to uh, find it or not run the module so nesting example now you can see nothing is being printed since the output is not met the output is not being printed because the condition is not met to be true and hence this output is not being shown now let us see let us put here minus we are checking for even positiveness right so though it is uh, neither it is even nor it is positive minus 5 so let us let us make it even positive so 6 and let us run the code again and see whether it is giving x is even positive or not so now you can see it is giving x is even positive why it is giving so because now the value of x is 6 which is which is positive as well as it is even now how this this is executed the first if checks the outer if checks for the positiveness so the x 6 is greater than 0 becomes true and hence we are going inside the body of the first if inside the body of the first if we are getting the second if the nested if and in this in this nested if we are checking whether the value of x is even or not by dividing it by 2 and getting the remainder and checking it checking the remainder with 0 so if it is found to be 0 the remainder is found to be 0 by dividing after dividing by 2 then we can say that x is positive so 6 percent 2 which is 2 times 2 uh, uh, 3 times of 2 is 6 and hence it is giving the remainder as 0 since this condition becomes true that means what this line under the nested if which is uh, print x is e even positive will be printed so we see that this the inner if x percent 2 equal to equal to 0 is nested within the outer if now let us ex uh, extend our problem and see a better example uh, where we will check for even positiveness and odd positiveness as well as even negativeness and odd negativeness so what we'll do i will we'll just uh, uh, make a small changes over here um, i will write p print it is even positive else i will write here i will put else part over here so in the nested part itself we are putting a else part so print x is odd positive x is odd positive and here with this if we will write a elif elif will add a elif x less than equal to 0 if x is less than equal to 0 that means negative for negativeness and here I will check again if x percent 2 is equal to equal to 0 then we will say that print it is x is even negative ok else here we will say print x is even x is odd negative 
so for each one of them we have checked the criteria now let us execute the code and see what happens and let us input the value of x in runtime so that the code can be executed nicely input enter any enter a, an integer All right so run this code and see what happens so we can see here when we are putting 6 this is giving x is even positive right let us ex let us execute the code again and see what happens to the output let us put a another integer value as say for example i am giving uh, minus 5 it is giving odd negative right x is odd negative which is correct then let us run the code with even negative say for example so even negative is uh, minus 4 so it is giving even negative x is even negative so this example uh, is uh, showing how we can nest one if condi if uh, if a statement within another if a statement or a pair of if else statement within a if a statement so nesting is uh, just putting the um, conditions or putting the statements under another statement right so this type of cascading is always important when you are going to uh, deal with complex logics let us see a second example to understand the nesting of looping statement or iterative statements so i will write up create a for loop for i in range 1 comma 3 and within this for loop in the body of this for loop i will again create another loop for j in range 1 comma 4 and within this inner for loop I will print a statement like i comma plus symbol comma j comma equal to i plus j and coming out of the for loop inner for loop I will print a new line character this is a black is uh, backspace characters which are available in python which are symbols to print special effects such as a slash n is used for printing special uh, uh, in, uh, for printing a new line so for new line character that's what we are using backslash n similarly we have backslash t for um, tab movement backslash b for backspace and so on there are many special symbols or special uh, escape sequences it may, you, may, you may call it escape sequences so these escape sequences are being used many times in programs in python here we are using to print a new line after each iteration of the inner loop so after completion of inner loop we are uh, printing a new line now let us let us see the output then we can understand it better now you can see what happens here let us understand let us analyze the output and find out what happens here so the nesting of for loop what happens in the nesting of for loop is that let us let us analyze it in a way that the first value of i the first value of i the i is iterating within the range 1 2 2 right 3 means 3 minus 1 2 so the two values for i will be 1 and 2 and the three values for j will be 1 2 and 3 so j will be iterating between 1 2 3 and i will be iterating between 1 and 2 so the first value of i is 1 now taking i equal to 1 it comes the control comes inside the outer loop and it is met with the for loop inner for loop so hence the inner for loop will be started and when the inner for loop will be started the j will be iterated from 1 to 3 so the first value of j will become 1 now the print statement is going to print i which is in the first iteration the value of i was 1 so 1 plus the in the second iteration the value of uh, j in the first iteration the value of j was 1 so 1 plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 1 the value is 2 now 
after the completion of this print statement the j will iterate to the next value which is after 1 it will iterate to 2 because the j iteration the j loop has not completed the for loop having j is not completed yet so it will go to the next to its next iteration and it will go to 2 now it will again uh, execute the line under its own body and the line is print statement so again the value of i which was 1 it is not going to uh, become 2 because the outer loop has not been iterated it is it has iterated only once so the value remains 1 only so i remains 1 only so 1 plus the next iteration next value we are printing slash n after execution of this line no, we are printing a slash n so next value will be 1 plus 2 the value next iteration value is 2 the j will become 2 so 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 then again the j will be iterated to the next alternate value uh, next iterating value that is 3 so again it will give you 1 plus 3 is equal to 4 right so it will give 4 now what happens you are coming out of the inner for loop the j loop the inner j for loop is getting completed fully when it is going to complete fully uh, you are going to come out of this for loop the inner for loop and you uh, and this line this statement is being met the print statement is being met and the this print statement what is the purpose of this print statement it is printing a new line and hence this new line is being shown over here and after which the outer loop again starts and starts iterating to its next new value though the value of i will be again iterated and the next value in the in the range will be 2 so again it i will become 2 and again the you know, outer for loop will be iterated now let us come inside the outer for loop and when we are coming inside the outer for loop we are going inside the outer for loop we are coming to the inner loop which is j again and j will be again iterated to from between 1 to 3 so again the values of our j will be 1 2 3 like that so i will be again fixed as 2 so the first iteration will be the i will the value of i will be 2 and the value of j will be 1 so 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 again the value of j will become what 2 so 2 plus 2 4 again the value of j will become in the third iteration the value of j will become 3 so 3 uh, so 2 plus 3 the value of i remains the same 2 so 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 and hence the j loop is completed the inner loop is completed when the inner loop is completed it comes out and it prints a new line so again this new line is being printed over here and now it proceed to the next iteration of i and since the range is completed here because i is iterating for only two times one and two the outer loop is also completed when the outer loop is also completed the program ends hence this is how it goes on so we can understand with this example that in case of nested for loop with each iteration of the outer loop the inner iteration the inner loop iterates to the fullest or to the maximum value so for each iteration of i the j will iterate to all the values throughout all the values so hence these combinations will come so for i the, the in the first case the i is 1 the j is iterating through 1, 2 and 3. For the next iteration of i, the j is again iterating through 1, 2 and 3. Hence, this type of output is being shown. So, here is another practice exercise for you on the use of nested conditional and looping statement. You should pause the video now and read the questions carefully and create programs as told in the question. The solution for this is done for you. But before jumping to the solution, I would like you to pause here and attempt the question yourself. The first, the first exercise, exercise problem, problem was to was check, to check for, for Lapier. The first exercise problem was to check for Lapier. Uh, non centurion year if divisible by 4 is a leap year and a centurion year divisible by 4 is leap year if it is divisible by 400 also so we know this point now let us put this logic into code 
So, we'll start it by writing a new Python file. So, we'll input here as integer input enter a four digit year. Now, if the condition will be put as if year percent hundred, let us check for century and year. So, if hundred per year percent hundred is equal to is not equal to zero. So, simply if it is not a century and year, then we'll put a nested if if year percent four is equal to equal to zero that means it is a non-century in year but divisible by four then we'll simply put a, it as a leap year it is a leap year else it is not a leap year it is not a leap year now if the year is not a centurion year then it will move to the else part so else and again in this else part we will be nesting this else part and in the body of the this else part we will be nesting another if which checks if year percent 4 this is for centurion year this this condition is for centurion year this else part is for centurion year centurion year if the year is divisible by 4 then we will come to this else part and under this else part we will again check for divisibility with 4 so if it is divisible by 4 so again we will nest it and we will check for if it is divisible by 400 also so a centurion year divisible by 4 must be also divisible by 400 to be, be to become a leap year so this checking is to be done and if this is so, if this is so, then uh, we'll be printing uh, it is a leap year. If not, if not, else print it is not a leap year. Now, this else, this if will also have a else part, which means what it is though it is a centurion year, but it is not divisible by 4. Then simply we will say that we will simply say that print it is not a leap year. Now, let us execute this program and see what happens to the set of inputs we supply to it. So, leap checking, right. Now, it is asking us to in input a four digit year. So, now let us execute this code and see what happens to the output. So, it is asking us to input a four digit year. So, let us input a set of uh, input uh, values. Say for example, first we will input 2020, the current year. And let us see what happens to this. It is a leap year. The current year is a, uh, was a leap year because the February has 29 days. So, it is a leap year. And uh, why this has come to this leap year and what will be, what is control? Let us check the control flow for 2020 as per the code example. So, when the year was 2020, this condition becomes uh, uh, false because 2020 is not a centurion year. So, since 2020 is not a centurion year, this condition becomes true. This is not equal, not divisible by 100, becomes true. And this if, the if inside this if becomes true because 2020 is divisible by 4. Hence, this is coming to be a leap year, right? Now, let us check for another input, another set of input and see how it goes on. So, let us run the module again. And this time, we'll put a, another value, for example, 2000, right? Now 2000 it is a leap year, it is giving a leap year. Now why? Uh, let us check the flow of this uh, particular input, how does it goes on. Uh, so 2000, when the year, the value of the two, uh, year is 2000, so 2000 percent 100 
is equal to equal to zero so hence it goes to this else else part this else part it moves to this else part right and then again this 20 20 percent 4 becomes what uh, sorry 2000 2, percent 4 4 becomes what uh, zero that means it is a centurion year as well as it is divisible by 4 it becomes true now it is also though it is a centurion year though it is divisible by 4 now let us check whether 2000 is divisible by 400 or not so 2000 is divisible by 400 also since 2000 is uh, divided by 400 gives you a remainder 0 so it is divisible by 400 and hence this line is printed it is a leap year it doesn't go to the else part now let us see another set of example and verify the uh, output accordingly so uh, let us execute the code again and uh, let us this time let us put another input say 2018 uh, it is showing it is not a leap year. Why? Why? Because uh, when the value of year is 2018, this condition uh, year percent 100 not equal to 0 becomes true. So we, we enter into this if part, we discard this else part, we enter into this if part and here we put 2018 percent 4 is equal to equal to 0 which becomes false. 2018 is not divisible by 4 hence it comes to the else part and it is giving you it is not a leap year. So the output is not a leap year. Now let us run the execute the code for another set of values say for example year to uh, 1900 1900 now 1900 let us check it is not a leap year it is it is showing 1900 is not a leap year now let us let us check uh, why it is showing 1900 not a leap year so the value of year here is 1900 1900 percent 100 is true because 1900 is divisible by 100 and hence it comes to the else part. It, it doesn't goes into the if part it comes to the else part so it enters into the, the control enters into the else part and here we put again 1900 percent 4 1900 percent 4 equal to equal to 0 is true because 1900 is divisible by 4 it is becoming true but when we come inside this nested if the last if which is year percent 400 so 1900 percent 400 is false because 1900 is though it is divis it is a centurion year though it is divisible by 4 it is not divisible by 400 since it is not divisible by 400 we proceed to the else part of this if internal if the nested if right we proceed to the else part of the nested if and hence this line will is this part is executed here it is not a leap year for the input 1900 so for 1900 for input 1900 we are proceeding we are jumping we are going to the else part in the else part we are going into the uh, inner if in the inner if we are going to the else part right and in the else part we are uh, printing what it is not a leap year so this is uh, uh, an example about uh, use of nested uh, if and this was asked as a sample question uh, now let us proceed to the solution to the next question in practice exercise which was to draw a pattern of uh, some characters on your screen uh, so it was a pattern you have to draw a pattern of hash and stars on the screen and in each line there was uh, one hash and one star in the increasing uh, with increasing uh, value right so let us uh, write the code for this uh, example uh, where we will print a pattern on the screen the second example so let us create a new file again and for this i will need a loop because this pattern star problem has to be solved using a loop so pattern printing problem here for i in range now uh, if you look to the question it has total 12 lines right uh, 11 lines actually not 12 line 11 lines to be outputted so our first loop will be iterating through range equal to 1 to 12 so that 12 lines are being executed the outer range and in the nested loop we will write for j in range range 1 to i plus 1 so whatever will be value of i that i will be substituted here and the j will iterate for 1 to i number of times right i minus 1 number of times right so it will iterate j a will iterate from 1 to j or uh, 1 to i sorry so now let us in in the internal uh, in the innermost for loop what we will write we will check whether this j is divisible by 2 or not so for even uh, for even place we will put a star for odd places we will have to put hash symbol so here 
uh, we'll do this uh, we'll implement this logic using a divisibility check so doing the divisibility check we'll find out whether it is a even position or a odd position if it is a even position we'll put here a star symbol and uh, we'll put a end end parameter also so that it is printed the star the pattern of star and hash are printed in the same line right so uh, this is very important to understand here that you should put a end over here and then else otherwise what is to be printed is a uh, hash symbol right so for uh, odd positions the hash symbols will be printed so this is end equal to this one right so after coming out of the inner for loop we have to leave uh, we have to print one new line because the next set of outputs uh, should be printed in the next line right otherwise the pattern will not be in the separate lines it will be printed all in same line so we have to put here print a uh, new line character as we have seen in earlier examples so new line character and then we'll run the code right so this is the code now let us execute the code and we'll see how it goes on so star star hash pattern right okay now you can see that this was the pattern to be printed right so this is the whole pattern which was to be printed over here so it is it is showing you star hash and all these things are being printed right star hash star then hash star hash star like that it 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 is being increasing with each line and it is showing the pattern so you can you can decrease the pattern you can change the number of lines also say so for example if i am going to change this i the iteration of i up to say for example 10 then it will iterate up to 9 means uh, 9 uh, 1 to 9 so the pattern will be uh, shown in lesser number of lines so if i am going to run this module now uh, it will show you lesser number of patterns right uh, the pattern will exhaust soon right so lesser number of patterns is shown so i hope this example is clear to you finally i have a class assignment for you to attempt there are five programs in this assignment which you should solve. You can send me your solutions to our Kaizala group. You may also send your doubts and queries to me on the gr same group. We will discuss these in our live YouTube and Skype sessions, which will be coming very soon. Thank you. See you in the next class.